All right, hello geometry friends. Welcome to section 7.5. This will be the last lesson in chapter seven, praise the Lord. Um, and it's on applying proportions. Um, so how we can use proportions in order to solve for um, indirect measurement or um, area or perimeter for various polygons. So let's step in. We've got three definitions and then a uh, just two questions. So here we go. Uh, the first one is indirect measurement. So what is indirect measurement? Uh, I, what I've written here is using formulas, similar figures, or proportions to measure an object. Um, but basically, you could think of it as indirect measurement means you're measuring something without going up to it with a ruler or going up to it with a tape measure um, and measuring it out yourself. It's kind of like finding a creative way uh, to measure something. And so, for example, um, the book will often use an example of like people in their shadows. So for, they'll, they'll say, okay, the, you had the Typical scenarios, you have a person here and you you know what their height is um, and then they have a shadow. So we'll draw a little shadowy person right here. Okay, looks like he's got dragon wings or something. And then so then you also have the height of the shadow. And so that creates a ratio. It creates a ratio of the height of the person to the length of their shadow. And then maybe you have some sort of a building uh, over here and you want to know, so we've got some office windows. Maybe those are terrible office windows got some off so you got a building here um, and you can't climb to the top of the building and you can't you know in order to measure it or you, you don't want to you want to find some other creative way to do it but that building at the same time of day at the same location as you it also has a shadow and what you can do is you can go ahead and pace out and you could figure out the the height uh, of that um, of that shadow well, then you could use what's known as indirect measurement to figure out the missing um, height of that building because you could set up a ratio. Um, let's go ahead and uh, you, see, you can see how I've labeled each ones, but you could say, so the ratio of height one, which is my height or the person's height, divided by the, ratio, the length of their shadow, that's what we're gonna call H2, that's equal to the missing height of the building divided by the length of its shadow. And so you can see there you have your typical proportion where you know three of the pieces and you just need the fourth and you can solve that by um, our wonderful trick of cross multiplying okay, and then dividing. And again, it's indirect because we didn't measure the height of the building, but we used a ratio and a proportion in order to figure out its height. Um, we also use indirect measurement if you've ever used a scale key on a map where like on a map, it'll say every inch equals so many miles. Um, and then you can calculate the mileage between distances. You're not actually pacing out the mileage distances between those places, but you're using an indirect ratio proportion um, in order to do it. So that's what we're going to, one of the techniques of applying uh, uh, ratios and proportions we'll be using in 7.5. Okay. Second definition, perimeter similarity. So getting to different uh, measurements of polygons. Well, if the similarity ratio of two figures is A to B, Okay, and again, the key thing here is we're talking about perimeter. Um, and so if it's A to B, then the perimeter is also A to B. And the key thing there is you can see that it doesn't change. Okay, so if I draw, let's just go ahead and draw a nice little rectangle here. And here's a similar rectangle. And if this is, we'll just make it simple. This is three and two. Actually, but I better make it bigger. Let's say this is six and four, and this one is three and two. And so we can check on what's the similarity ratio. Well, six over three and four over two, both of those simplify to two to one. So the similarity ratio here is, oops, not two to two, two to one. So the similarity ratio here is two to one. So if I were to calculate the perimeters of these two shapes, I would expect to have uh, this exact same uh, similarity ratio of two to one. Um, and we can actually check that right now. Let's go ahead and see it. So the perimeter of the first shape, six, four, it would also be another six and another four. Uh, that's 10 and 10. So that's 20. So the perimeter of the first shape is 20. And the perimeter of the other shape, well, that would be three over here, two over here. So that's five and five, but that's 10. And so we can see 20 over 10 is, in fact, 2 over 1. So the perimeter should have the same ratio as the sides, uh, individual sides have to each other when we're talking about perimeter. So A to B, it still should be 
A to B. In a second, we'll look at area and we'll see that that's, that's different. Um, but in perimeter, it is the same. Uh, the other uh, way that you'll use this is so that if I know my similarity ratio is two to one, and then they tell me, oh, the, the perimeter of this other shape is 45, well, then I can set up a proportion. I can do something like, and I'm not gonna draw it, but quick example. If I know my, my ratio is two to one, and I know, say, this perimeter is 50, then I can immediately solve for the perimeter of the other shape. Um, assuming I can't just figure it out like I just did, I can know that the other shape, the, other, the perimeter of the other shape must be also two to one, so it's probably 25, so that it would still be two to one. So you'll be doing problems like that, setting up proportions. It's important to know that the side ratio is the same as the perimeter ratio. Nothing changes. But let's then look at area. Okay, so how does it work for area? Well, if the side ratio is, or the similarity ratio is just A to B, the similarity of the area, that says is a poorly spelled right there, which is one mark over that. So now, similarity, there we go. <laughs> Little grammar, I put everything. Okay, um, is A to B squared, or this kind of is the same as just saying, you know, A squared over B squared. Because as the sides change, the perimeter is not going to change in comparison, but because area covers two dimensions, you're actually going to need to square the similarity ratio uh, for that to apply. Let's go ahead and take that, let's go ahead and just draw our exact same two rectangles from the previous example. Uh, let's see, our first one was six and four. And the other one was three and two. Okay, so we've already demonstrated that my basic, my A to B, is two to one. Okay, the side ratio is six over three and four over two. Those both reduce to two to one. What about the area? Well, let's take a look. The area of the first rectangle, okay, because now the influence, the difference is being felt twice because it's being felt, it's twice as big um, in length and it's twice as big as why we're going to square it. The area of the first one is 24, and the area of the little guy here is 6. So first off, you can see that is not one half. It's not 24 and 12. It's 24 to 6, um, which reduces to 4 over 1, which if we go back to our original uh, ratio, if I had squared 2 squared over one squared, that is in fact four to one. So there we can kind of demonstrate this relationship that the side ratio, if you want to know how it's going to influence the areas, you need to square the A and the B. So if you have a, uh, if you have a similarity ratio of like three to five, your perimeter will be three to five, but your area would be nine over 25. Okay, so you can see that. Okay, you're, you're going to square them in terms of area. And you will be solving proportions uh, for area, and you'll see that this, this comes into play. So, again, and these are indirect measurements. You're calculating perimeter or you're calculating area, not necessarily by, by actually calculating them. I just did that here as a demonstration, but you can actually find them using proportions, um, which is what indirect measurement is. Um, but if you're doing area, you got to make sure you square the similarity ratio. And we'll do, we'll do the questions will give us some examples of that. So let's get to the questions. Uh, the first one is just your basic shadow um, indirect measurement problem. It says a five foot woman measures her shadow as four feet. And at the same time, she sees the shadow of a tall tree as 10 feet. Uh, she can't climb the tree. She has no practical means of measuring the height of the tree, but she could maybe step off the height of the shadow or she's got a meter stick or, you know, you know, we all carry those around. Use your phone. Phones can be used to measure distance. Um, so let's set up a proportion to indirectly measure X there, the height of the tree. Um, because again, you've got a ratio here that's going to have to be, assuming this is the same time of day and they're in the same location, uh, that ratio is going to have to hold, hold true. So again, you've got flexibility in how you set up your ratios. I would, in this case, would say, okay, my actual height or the woman's actual height over the shadow uh, is equal to the tree's actual height over the height of its shadow. So make sure you've you've got that set up. Just because we said this in class, you could you could also do this very well. You could line up the, the two heights. You could say uh, the height of the woman and the height of the tree is going to be equal to the height of the woman's shadow and the height of the tree's shadow. Um, either one of these, you're gonna get the exact same answer. You can see 
it by because we're going to solve it by cross multiplying and dividing, uh, you'll get the same solution. So I'll just go ahead and solve the second one since it's there. But we're going to cross multiply. Okay, we get 4x equals 50. And then we're going to divide by 4. All right, and so 50 divided by 4 is 13 and a half. So x equals 13.5 feet. And as we see, well, the woman was a little taller than her shadow. The tree should be a little taller than its shadow, 13 and a half to 10, 5 to 4. So that seems like a reasonable answer. So that tree is 13 and a half feet tall. And you didn't have to climb it uh, to measure it. You just had to know the length of its shadow. Okay. And again, you can see you'd get the same answer if we cross multiplied uh, over here. Okay, so that's a typical indirect measurement problem, solving using proportions. Um, and so then we have number two. Oh, forgot to write it out here. Number two says uh, the sides of a square are, of two squares are two centimeters and seven centimeters. So we've got a square. Since they're square, that means it's two by two. And then we've got a bigger square, and that's seven by seven. Okay. Um, what is the ratio of their perimeters? Okay, well, the ratio of the perimeters would have would be the same as the ratio of their sides. The sides are A to B, then the perimeters to A to B. So I just need to um, compare these just like that. It'd be 2 to 7 for their uh, perimeter. That's not the calculation of the perimeter. That's just the similarity ratio. Um, it doesn't reduce, so we're done. Uh, what's the similarity of their areas okay so then the areas again i don't actually have to calculate the areas here if all they want to know is the ratio of their areas i just know that it's this it's a to b squared so if that's two to seven then it's just simply two squared oops two squared over seven squared which is going to be four over 49 and that's their area similarity Okay, so you can see again. Uh, there we go, get into that. So, so we just square them, and that's the similarity of their areas. Now, what we can do is, if the question says, set up a proportion to sh uh, for each to show that this is true. Okay, and so what, the, what what we mean by that is, we should be able to go ahead and calculate the perimeter, and we should see that the ratio of the perimeter is in fact two over seven. Does in fact equal two over seven. So let's do that. Um, the sides are the per uh, perimeter in red are two to seven, and that should be equal to uh, the perimeter. So the perimeter of the first one is two, 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 two. So the perimeter of the little guy is eight, and the perimeter of the one is seven, 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 seven. And so that is uh, four times seven, 28. Okay, and so we can see, is that in fact true? Well, let's cross multiply. Uh, 7 times 8 is 56, and 2 times 28 is also 56. So bingo, excuse me, check. Um, they are, in fact, uh, proportional. We can do the same thing with the areas. Uh, we just said that according to our a squared over b squared, I should get a 4 over 49 uh, ratio of the areas. Well, let's calculate the actual area. Uh, the little one would be 2 times 2. Big one would be seven times seven. Oh, 49. This is pretty straightforward. So we can see very clearly, in fact, the area, the, the literal uh, ratio of the errors is four to 49. So that is, in fact, uh, correct. So cha-ching. Um, so that last, of just verifying that is, in fact, true. But again, the whole idea is that if you're calculating perimeter, it's going to have the same ratio and you'd use the same proportion as the ones to the sides, in this case, two to seven. If you're calculating the area, you would need to account for the fact that it's going to be the side squared. So four, two squared, four, seven squared, 49, four to 49. All righty, we'll dig into this in class. We'll go, you'll get to practice some more complicated examples, hopefully ask for some help um, and uh, learn a lot and kick some butt while we do it. See you soon. And this will be the end of chapter seven. So we're on to the review after this. All right.